or it's tinkering under the bonnet or polishing up the chrome. And over the past couple of months, I put all my spare time into one very special car indeed. I bought this car four years ago for £400. It's a 1965 S-Type Jaguar. And for the last couple of years, it's been under a barn on the farm with a couple of cats sleeping on the roof. But today, my 20-year-old Jag is going to become a racing car. The Jaguar Drivers Club holds a series of race meetings every year. But before I could compete in any of them, I had to go to a test day at Silverstone, one of Britain's two Grand Prix circuits. Hi, how are you? In the paddock, I met Ray Ingman, who also drives a white S-type like mine. But he's quite an experienced racer. including you. You've obviously right. done it before a lot, though. Yeah, four years now. I understand I've got to take these hubcaps off. That's right. Is that You've just got... for safety? That's for safety, because they can fly off in the corners. Ray also took out anything loose from the inside, including the back seat. If I turn the car over, it could be dangerous. Some of the other cars were revving like they meant business, so I asked Ray how fast our S-types would go on the track. My car... Along the long, the long main straight, we'll do about 125. Yours will probably do about 105, 110. And so I hope your brakes work. <laughs> yes, I hope the brakes work as well. Polish the old mascot. There we go. Yeah. Uh, does that need to be fastened right. down? Yes. Again, for safety, just in case it were to vibrate up, you want to put a, a strap around it like this. Just hook it into the grill slat. In all motor racing, every car has to be checked in the scrutineering bay before it can go out on the circuit. And mine was no exception. Okay? Fine. Fine. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Bye. The scrutineers check that the car is safe, that the windscreen is strong enough, there's no oil dripping from the engine, and that there aren't any bits falling off. Since it had looked more like a tractor a few days before, I thought my S-Type did well to get through. As a red D-type and a black Mark II left the pits, I put on my racing helmet and prepared to drive out onto the hallowed tarmac for the first time. A quick clunk click of the seatbelt, and we were away. As I accelerated up the pit lane, it gave me a tremendous thrill to think that I was driving along the same stretch of track as Sterling Moss, James Hunt, and Ayrton Senna, even if they did travel three times faster than me. Because it's a test day here at Silverstone today, there's all sorts of Jags racing. It's not just saloons. There are E-types, D-types and all types. Some of them are very fast indeed. It all feels a bit odd because uh, with the helmet on, it deafens all the, all the noise outside. Anyway, here we go. We'll see what happens. Very difficult to get any illusion of speed because uh, unlike driving on the road there's nothing to see all you see is racetrack there's no trees or lampposts I'm sure the big boys would be going around here much faster but I think the first time around I'll take it pretty steady although my Jaguar had made the giant leap from Dethic to Silverstone its power and safety still needed a lot more attention to give me any chance in a race so I took it to Ray's workshop in Essex for a thorough overhaul. They don't look very good from this angle. They look at their worst, but we'll have a look now, see what's, what's wrong with it. I shall brace myself for the worst. Mm. She made a beautiful job with the suspension. That looks tremendous. Ray had already replaced the shock absorbers, which helped to give a smoother ride, and the brakes, so that I could approach corners faster. We've got some work to do on the rear suspension up here, but one of the worst parts is the exhaust here is rubbing on the petrol tank. Oh dear, Which, uh, yeah, that's no, not very clever, good. is it? Yeah. A potential fire hazard. That's right, yeah. could be. Otherwise, not too bad? No, not too bad at all. Got a nice car underneath. Then we had to tune up the engine. Pop it and bang it a bit. It'd be better when the air filter's on. That's right, and it warms up. Yeah, it's a good idle though, isn't it? Sounding all right. <laughs> Plenty of power, this engine. Yeah, it's a nice engine. With a bit of careful tweaking, my S-Type was in much better shape for race day, which is more than you could say about the driver. 
with rain forecast, I tried to pick up some last minute tips on how to get round the track from Ray. The big circuit is the Grand Prix circuit. Right. We use what they call a club circuit, which is a smaller one here. Now, we start where it says start and finish, right. and these are the pits all along here. Right. So this corner, you're in third, and you try and straighten out the bend. So you'll come across here, and you'll find you'll naturally come out and go to the outside of the track again. The race before mine had already started. Officials were busy recording lap times, and as the atmosphere built up, I began to get a touch of pre-race nerves. OK, safe, you're yeah. comfortable? Yeah. Right, remember, when the red light comes on, it'll be about three to five seconds, it'll go green, you go. Make sure the handbrake's off, make sure it's in first. Just look after yourself. OK, right? yeah, you Good too. Good luck. Yeah, thanks for yourself. See you later. As I made my way to the starting grid, I knew the car would last 10 laps. I only hoped I would too. More experienced drivers were already lining up on the grid with this red Mark II in pole position. I was directed alongside a white XJ6, car number 11. As a beginner, my practice times had been slow. That's why I was at the back of the lineup and Ray was very near the front. Three minutes to go, the longest in any racing driver's life. Feeling pretty ropey at the moment. First time I've never not had lunch. I tried to steady my nerves as the one minute to go sign came up. That was the signal to turn on the ignition. With a terrific thrust of power, all 24 cars surged forward at once in a mad dash to squeeze in front on the home straight. It took me a couple of laps just to get used to racing. It was totally different from any other kind of driving I'd done, with cars coming at me from all sides and at high speed. I tried to remember what Ray had said about straightening the bend at Cops Corner, approaching on the outside, taking it on the inside, and then moving to the outside again. But that's easier said than done when there's another S-type on your tail. By lap six, the field had thinned out. It was raining, but I was getting the hang of it. Approaching Woodcock Corner, I had number 11, the white XJ6, in my sights. I couldn't quite catch him on the bend, and he started to get away from me on the straight. But as I changed gear before Cops Corner, I saw my chance. The XJ6 went too wide, and I just took him on the inside, the first car I'd ever overtaken on the racetrack. I might have got past number 11, but Ray was soon overtaking me. With his headlights showing that he was a lap ahead, he flashed by on the final straight towards the chequered flag. The Costa Line to take the chequered flag, Tony Williams then, second place then, number 19, Ray Ingham. Third place is going to be number nine, Jeff Maycock. The quick work to Simon Groom, just coming through Beckett for his lap time now. He's uh, driven a nice steady race, no spins that we've seen. It seemed the only place I was going to catch up with Ray was back in the paddock. How do you do? Second. Second? Not too bad. Put it there. Brilliant. On yourself? Ah, uh, I don't know. I didn't know it had finished. I no, just, it's difficult, I just isn't it? I told you, yeah. yeah. We'll find out soon. We'll get the, the positions will be posted in the, the uh, that race. That's brilliant. Up. Tremendous. Thank Were you, you leading at one stage? Yeah. A few laps. So what one? It was in Mark Two. It was in Mark Two. See, it was snowing out there, raining and sunshine. It got a bit tricky, didn't it? So about got, lap eight. If you can race in this, you can race anywhere. <laughs> I almost got in reverse on one corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very glad I didn't put it in reverse. That's I probably wouldn't be here now. But the S-Type is none the worse for it's ten laps and there's not a scratch on it. I actually came 17th out of 22 in the end, which is not bad for my first attempt. And the Jaguar Drivers Club very kindly gave me this lovely souvenir trophy so thank you very much for that i will return to silverstone because i'm very keen to win well done that man you look right chuffed in that and no wonder thank you and if you're mad keen on cars like simon is then you may like to know that a new edition of the observer's book of automobiles will be printed at the end of the month